Hey, did you end up seeing Dune 2 this weekend? Oh my god, yeah. Best movie I've seen this year, maybe in like the last two or three. Probably easy. Dude, I know. But it got me thinking. Sniper's basically 100 Thieves Lee on Al Gaib, right? You did not just... You know, this chosen one that's like supposed to come in and guide us to the light and be able to bring us into this unfound glory era. Okay then, can you explain to me why he would do this? The Lee Al Gaib is supposed to die in that situation. He has to fool his enemies into thinking that he's bad. Okay, or what about being down two towers to literally nothing? The Lisa Al Qaeda focuses not on towers, but on his team and playing around them. That's not on him. Man, you really don't understand the point of the Lisa Al Qaeda story, do you? I'm, I'm, dude, I'm cooking with fire here. That's on you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Rendezvous, your weekly meetup for 100 Thieves, everything LCS, and around the org. This week went pretty much as expected, but let's get into the games first before we start looking forward. You good over there, Luna? For the first time in a long time, we had a game that we didn't chuck or throw in any way, shape, or form. The Dignitas game from start to finish was pretty clean. River pulled out a pretty interesting Trundle pick, which he would then play again against FlyQuest, but at least in the Dignitas game, he looked pretty damn good on it. Meech would play a Deathless Senna, which was played very, very well, especially against a Smolder, where Smolder got into execute range. Smolder actually did a very good job on Dignitas' as part of making sure they stacked up and got to 225 earlier than most others on the day. But every time that somebody was close to execute range, Senna was there, healing up, and dealing damage. Sniper on Renekton was not bad. Got a kill early in lane thanks to a gank from River, but overall I'm not going to say it was like his most effective champion because we do have to point out that moment. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And what more is there to say about Quid at this point? Pulls out the Huey, 2v1, overall just has an incredible game where he's dealing damage and bursting the entire team at points. Just MVP level stuff, clearly. Which is honestly what made it a little bit off-putting when we put him on Karma the next day. And it's not like his Karma against FlyQuest wasn't impactful. He was constantly chunking Jensen down out of lane. And I would say overall, he played it very well. But the problem is Quid is like our big damage dealer. Our go-to guy to make sure that he carries the game. At least him and Meech. With the FlyQuest draft, we shifted that hand entirely. It's on Sniper and Meech this time as River's still on Trundle duty, and now, while Karma can do damage, it is nowhere close to the same thing as Huey or any of the other damage dealers that Quid has been playing. And the FlyQuest game was our first loss in a month. Yes, a month. And it felt like the first time we've really seen like the scrim 100 Thieves that was rumored on stage, as it's not like we played that horribly, individually like it wasn't a game where i walk away being like oh man i lost a lot of faith in any particular person or any particular moment but our macro was definitely a little suspect and that's where sniper and circling back on the conversation there uh comes into play here and i'm wondering maybe he might have been a little bit more lax because this is the first time that he's not playing in front of a crowd maybe it was because we took him out of that environment that it definitely got a little looser the decision that i'm going to question that i think ultimately led to our loss was the choice after getting a kill what you would think would be a now ahead or winning matchup for Renekton in top lane, he rotates down to mid lane to try and get a kill on Orianna and wastes a lot for it. Ends up dying while Olaf is able to take the entire top tower. And there's this constant, what felt like, thought of like, okay, Sniper's going to rotate to be with the team and Olaf is going to come down and fight us too because why would he not? But then Olaf just stayed top lane took both top towers and then it's Whippo so he did carry the game once he got the gold lead it just felt like we kept leaving him alone at points where we really shouldn't be leaving him alone or shouldn't be giving him free uncontested stuff like I don't know if we needed Renekton in there to win some of those early fights we have a Kaisa, Nautilus, Karma, Trundle we should be able to win that even if you do get outranged by Ash and Ezreal and you do have the Ori on a ball to speed him up like I, I don't see a world where like we truly need to renect in that bad to the point where we can sack two towers for it. But overall, I'm not upset by this loss. I Again, I, coming into the week, expectations were we should finish 1-1. One and one. If we could beat FlyQuest, great. Nobody thought we'd really have a fight for first, but yet somehow we did. And yet, here we are. So, you can't be mad at the end of the day. But, let's look forward a bit. Before we even get into next week's matchups and where we could potentially end, I turned it over to you all on Twitter and said, hey... Where do you think we finish the split? Without knowing the playoff bracket, without anything else, just the information we have on hand, where do you think we finish? Because remember, if you finish top two, you go to MSI. And the prevailing thought was 
a combination of third, fourth, and then Arsh chucking in a fifth, six out of nowhere. To which I would say that's a very fair opinion. Cloud9, while well, they bounce back this week, and I know a lot of people are high on them, I don't think they played this week incredibly well. Now, that's not saying that they can't ramp up, but they're is a clear scenario where yes it's likely going to be us versus c9 or nrg in that first best of five to guarantee top three to review the playoff bracket one plays their choice of three or four and then two is safe and plays the other person so assuming cloud nine likely finishes third i don't see a world where flag quest picks anybody other than us or nrg likely if it's between c9 and nrg and we could hold our standings i think they pick nrg which means we would play cloud nine you win that single series you're guaranteed top three you lose that series potential for fifth six and it would be a probably the hardest possible test to kick everything off but i truly do believe that we can finish second that's not me trying to oversell you and that's not me saying that we can we could finish fifth six we could be a terrible best of five team we have no clue but i've seen enough from this team already and enough from our potential to know that if we play properly through mid jungle and let Meech just sit back and deal damage in the same way that Danny kind of used to, I think we're fine. That's been our strategy so far. Whenever the onus is on Meech to make plays for now, like it's good, but like I don't feel like we play as well around it. And Sniper just has to rebound, simple as that. So I'm going to agree with the majority of people. I think that first series against Cloud9 or NRG is likely going to determine a lot in terms of my confidence but i'm going to say second or third is my final answer i think it all just depends on where we place against cloud nine i have not been convinced on nrg at all and i don't think there's any other team that like really stands out to me that we can't beat i think c9 and flag quest are just the two that i look at it's like i, I don't know it's gonna be tough it really is on an org note i am filming this on monday so i can't guarantee what has happened since what's been said on tuesday or wednesday but courage has asked to cast the Shopify game this upcoming week, to which I would say, let's do it, but just keep in mind, every time the Courage is cast at 100 Thieves game, at least last year, we lost. So that is a curse that we do have to break. Even if I love Jack, I love his cast, and I, do, I want nothing more than to see him on the LCS broadcast, just know there is a risk that you are running by having him there. Other than that, Really not much happening around the org. Kind of a quiet week. So let's close this out with our schedule for a super week. The final week of the regular season, our final chance to put ourselves top two and prevent FlyQuest from picking us, assuming that they finish first. Because if you listen to pros, it sounds like they will be picking us if they get the chance. First game versus Immortals, I'm not gonna lie, Immortals has not looked great at all. The games I've watched on them this past weekend, they look like they're just indecisive. They're playing scared. They don't know what to do. Mask has not looked great at all. So I think Quig can clearly take advantage of that. And just overall, honestly, I'm not worried. I mean, I wouldn't even call this a trap game where, like, I think we're at risk of losing. Like, if we lose to Immortals here, it is legitimately a bad thing. Granted, they're probably going to be playing with, like, the weight off. Well, actually, no. I think that actually they'll still be playing with the weight on because if they win this game, the pressure is still there for them to make playoffs. But if they lose this, I think they're mathematically out. So, yeah. I'm, I'm saying we win this one pretty easy, and I actually have confidence and faith in our team to pull this one off. The Saturday game. I would have faith if I knew whether Jack was casting or not. Regardless, Shopify's 1-1 one, one week was iffy. Their win wasn't great, and their loss was pretty bad, as Insanity had a massive lead on Huey and did absolutely nothing with it. So overall, two games where I think, yeah, well, we should be fine. We should be able to take care of this. Uh, Sniper... Like, please put Fake God on the ground. Fake God has not been playing well, and I don't want to fall to allegations of him actually being decent. Which all leads us to our final game. It is likely going to be us versus NRG to decide who gets second, whether us or C9, or if there's a tiebreaker. Like, obviously, we have a one-on-one -on -one record with Cloud9 and a one-game lead, so if we lose this, we still can be tied with them, and we'd have to play a tiebreaker to make sure that uh, they can't pick us. But we could just simply beat NRG outright. And not gonna lie, NRG hasn't looked phenomenal. Wow, Palafox has had his moments where he looks decent. FBI I still think is pretty good overall. Looking at that top side in Dokla and looking at some of the plays that who he's been making, even though he had the game where he was like massively fed on Nautilus as he was like solo farming bot lane and center roamed around. This team lacks cohesion, clearly. Like it just seems like they're mis-executing on a lot of different fronts, which is one area where we ironically haven't been. Like whenever we're all together as a team, we're fairly decisive you know sometimes it goes wrong but for the most part we've been actually doing pretty well so do i favor us still over energy yeah 
is it going to be closer than I'm comfortable with? Also, yeah. But as weird as it is to say, I'm having faith in this team. And I'm starting to not like let my guard down, but like I'm starting to allow myself to get in the moment to actually like be excited and be hyped for the squad because I feel like being reserved is just as bad as like setting expectations too high or setting expectations too low. Like you're not allowing yourself to be honest, which I think is going to be key to being on invested fully on this emotional journey. It's like, don't guard yourself, embrace the ride, let it go to its fullest extent and see where it goes from there. So that's it for me on the rendezvous this week. We will check back in after Super Week, find out what our playoff match potentially looks like. I mean, we shouldn't miss playoffs, but there technically is a world where that happens. But see you all in a week. We'll be live every day on Twitch for all the games to watch them. Hope to see you there.